Hi everybody. Again, my name is Dr. Omide and this time round we are going to discuss sensory and motor pathways. Now, a lot of students tend to really shy away from this um, topic. Um, many complain it's complicated, but it's not. It's very easy and I want you to pay attention and follow this through and you will understand. After we have discussed um, the uh, cerebrum, we've discussed the diencephalon, the brainstem, and the spinal cord. So it's easy for you to understand ascending and descending tracts because descending tracts are coming from the body through the spinal cord to the brain. So from the spinal cord to the medulla, the pons, the midbrain, thalamus to the cerebrum and the cortex. And uh, those are ascending tracts. And descending tracks will come from the cortex to the thalamus, midbrain, pons downwards to the medulla and the spinal cord to the body. So you need to have understood that if you haven't, go back to the subsequent lectures of the cerebrum, the diencephalon, and the brainstem and the spinal cord before you can understand ascending and descending tracks. So we'll begin. So what are the characteristics of a pathway? A pathway is made up of tracks, nuclei, and relays or synapsing between nerves. And it's usually composed of two or three neurons, first order neuron, second order neuron, third order neuron. And some pathways have decussation where they'll be crossing, uh, the tracks will be crossing the midline from right to left or from left to right. And then pathways involve both the brain and spinal cord and they're usually uh, paired so you'll find uh, they're symmetric or bilateral so we'll start with the ascending pathways which are the somatic sensory pathways so again there will be a receptor that will feel the um, change in the environment either external or internal environment and then we have an afferent fiber which carries the information to the CNS in this case the spinal cord then from the spinal cord through the brainstem to the thalamus. So from the thalamus to the brain. So only 1% of um, sensory information reaches the cerebral cortex. That means it reaches sensory awareness. The spinal cord is the integration, uh, uh, spinal cord integration produces a rapid motor response and that's what we call a stretch reflex. So majority of the Re reflexes are controlled at the spinal cord and the brainstem level. Only 1% will reach the cerebral cortex, so to conscious awareness. So the sensory pathway has three neurons. From the receptor, we have a first order neuron that will take the information to the spinal cord or the brainstem. Within the spinal cord or the brainstem, we have a second order neuron, and this will carry the information to the thalamus. And then from the thalamus, we have a third order neuron that will carry the information to the cerebral cortex. So for all the sensory pathways, I want you to remember this. From my receptor, first order neuron to the spinal cord or brainstem. Then synapsing will occur. Second order neuron will begin at spinal cord to brainstem and brainstem to the thalamus. Another synapsing will occur. And third order neuron, the cell body is at the thalamus and it will relay at the cerebral cortex. So this is the most important uh, part of the sensory pathways. So the first order neuron um, is from the, from the receptor to the CNS and the cell body is usually located in the dorsal root ganglion. The axon will pass to the spinal cord through the dorsal root of the spinal nerve. Okay. So um, the second order neuron, on the other hand, will has its cell body in the spinal cord or the medulla oblongata, and the axon usually decussates and terminates on the third order neuron. So um, you can see that's the second order neuron. Okay, then the third order neuron has a cell body in the thalamus and the axon terminates on the cerebral cortex. So I'll go back again. Look at the, uh, the, the diagram at the side. Pay attention. Look at the diagram. So we start the first order neuron um, is the one in green. Second order neuron is in red. 
and third order neuron is in blue. So first order neuron is from the receptor to the um, spinal cord or the brainstem. So the cell body is in the dorsal root ganglion. Second order neuron, on the other hand, the cell body is on the spinal cord or brainstem, or which is medulla, and in, uh, the axons usually decussate, so they may cross the midline and terminate on a third order neuron at the thalamus. And third order neuron has its cell body in the thalamus and terminates on the cerebral cortex. So look at the picture on your right. That green, that's a first order neuron, okay, from the receptor to the spinal cord. Then second order neuron begins in red. So you can see this crossing, it has crossed the midline immediately from left to right, then ascends to the thalamus. Then it will relay onto a third order neuron whose cell body is in the thalamus, the blue, and that will be relayed onto the cerebral cortex. So, um, white matter generally pathways are tracts, and tracts are bundles of myelinated nerve fibers. So they usually have same origin, same course, and uh, same destination and function. And the name of the track indicates the origin and destination. So when you say corticospinal, means it's from cerebral cortex to the spinal cord. So tracks of the spinal cord, we have, they could either be ascending or descending. So ascending are carrying sensory information, descending most of the time is motor information. So fibers that interconnect adjacent segments of the spinal cord, those are intersegmental uh, or proprio-spinal tracks. So um, we have the intersegmental tracts like fasciculus propress. Okay, these are short ascending and descending fibers. They could be crossed, both crossed and uncrossed, and begin and end within the spinal cord. So you can see the fasciculus propress, the red that is surrounding the gray matter, and that usually participates in intersegmental spinal reflex. So it has both ascending and descending fibers and both are crossed and uncrossed. Then we have dorsolateral tract of Lissauer. You can see the green on the dorsal aspect of the dorsal horn. Okay, that's the dorsolateral tract of Lissauer. Usually contains primary sensory fibers. So they have, they carry the information for pain, temperature and touch. And the branches usually ascend and descend several spinal segments before synapsing in the dorsal horn. So when they arrive there, they ascend to the next Several spinal segments will descend before synapsing. Intersegmental fibers that cross the midline form what we call the anterior white commissure. That's usually anterior to the um, central canal of the spinal cord. So this picture here shows as the um, Sorry for that. So we continue. This picture here shows ascending and descending tracts. So ascending tracts are on your left, descending tracts are on the right. So for undergraduate students, I usually recommend um, you should know at least six ascending tracts and six descending tracts. So we can ask you, draw the cross section of the spinal cord and show the ascending tracts on one side and descending tracts on the other. These tracts are found on both sides, but just for you to be able to differentiate, uh, it's good to list the ascending on one side and descending on the other side. So we start with the ascending tract. So we have the, this is the dorsal. Remember we say the white matter has dorsal column, lateral column, and ventral column. Okay, so we start with the dorsal column. We have fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus. Okay, on both sides. So from the median sulcus, dorsal median sulcus is fasciculus gracilis followed by fasciculus cuneatus. These two carry information um, of proprioception, vibration, and two-point discrimination. So fasciculus uh, gracilis carries information from the lower limb, okay, below T6. And then above T6, fasciculus cuneatus will take over and carry the proprioception, vibration, and two-point discrimination. Then when you go to the lateral column, the ascending tracts are um, the posterior spinocerebella and anterior spinocerebella, and these have a role in um, balance. So from the spinal cord to the cerebellum. Okay, so 
Then on the anterior, on the still on the lateral column, we have lateral spinothalamic tract. This carries pain and temperature information from the spinal cord to the thalamus. And on the ventral column, we have the anterior spinothalamic. So the six ascending tracts that you must know are fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus. Both carry proprioception and vibration sense from lower limb, that's fasciculus gracilis, and above T6 is fasciculus cuneatus. Then anterior and posterior spinocerebellar, from spinal cord to cerebellum, they deal with balance. And then anterior and lateral spinothalamic. Lateral spinothalamic is for pain and temperature, and anterior spinothalamic is for crude touch. Then the descending tracts, we have lateral and anterior corticospinal. From the cerebral cortex to the spinal cord, these are motor, uh, carry uh, uh, motor information. So lateral corticospinal and anterior corticospinal tract. Then you need to know lateral reticulospinal and medial reticulospinal from reticular formation to the spinal cord. Then we have rubrospinal from red nucleus in the midbrain to the spinal cord. So this is where it will pass in the lateral column. Then anterior column has vestibulospinal from vestibular nuclear to the spinal cord and tectospinal from the tectum to the spinal cord. Remember the tectum, the corpora cordigemina, the superior and inferior colliculi so those are carried so the six descending tracts that you need to know are anterior and posterior cortico lateral and anterior corticospinal lateral and medial reticulospinal rubrospinal vestibulospinal and tectospinal so in the so the ascending spinal tracts usually carry sensory modalities that will reach conscious level if they get to the cerebral cortex and those include pain, temperature, touch and proprioception. So proprioception, vibration, two-point discrimination in the dorsal corniculi, which are gracilis and cuneatus, where pain and temperature in the lateral spinothalamic and touch, uh, crude touch in the anterior spinothalamic. Then tactile and stretch receptors are carried to subconscious level to the cerebellum, that's the anterior and posterior spinocerebellum tract. So that's a posterior um, colliculi, fascicular gracilis and fascicular cuneatus. Then the lateral aspect, we have anterior and posterior spinocerebellum. Then we have lateral and anterior spinothalamic tracts. So the ascending pathway, again, you need to know fascicular gracilis, fascicular cuneatus, proprioception and vibration sense, as well as two-point discrimination. Fascicular cuneatus above T6, fascicular gracilis below T6. Spinal cerebellar, stretch and balance carry information to the cerebellum, so it does not reach conscious level. Lateral spinothalamic, pain and temperature. Anterior spinothalamic carries um, information based on crude touch. So those are the six that you need to know at undergraduate level. But other ascending tracts include cuneo cerebellar, spinal tectal, spinal reticular, spinal livery, and visceral sensory tracts. So depending on where they're coming from, so they're named based on where they come from too where they terminate. So the next uh, lecture, we are going to discuss each of these ascending tracks. Thank you very much.